Venom is directed by Ruben Fleischer, who is probably best known for directing Zombieland, and stars Tom Hardy as reporter Eddie Brock, who becomes bonded with the alien symbiote Venom, who in the Marvel comics is a villain and sometimes ally of Spider-Man, where he is at times portrayed as an anti-hero. I am a big fan of the Venom character, and I was incredibly excited when I heard he was going to be included in Spider-Man 3 way back in 2007. He is without a doubt my favourite Spider-Man villain. I love him from the comics, from the Todd McFarlane stuff, all the way to the Ultimate Spider-Man stuff, but as many of you guys, I was very disappointed in how the character was handled in Spider-Man 3. He was underdeveloped and had no real business or need to be in that film. And we now know that producer Avi Arad has taken the blame for shoehorning Venom into Spider-Man 3. So now 11 years and two Spider-Man reboots later, Sony Pictures has managed to get together a standalone Venom film after trying it as a spin-off from Spider-Man 3 and later a spin-off from the Amazing Spider-Man films. Now we have a completely standalone Venom film, which has absolutely no ties to Spider-Man whatsoever. This obviously brought a lot of skepticism from fans over how a Venom movie could work without Spider-Man, but I remained optimistic about this film. All it takes is someone with a unique idea to re-envision the character, so I was willing to give the movie a shot. What we got is a movie that just exists. It's not high art and it doesn't try to be, but it also isn't sure what it wants to commit to. The movie opens with a darker horror tone, which leaves you thinking, okay, this is what the film is. It's going to be this alien body horror type film. As Venom was supposedly an R-rated film or MA15 plus here in Australia, in fact the director has mentioned that a longer, more violent version of the film could be headed to the Blu-ray. But then the moment we meet our hero Eddie Brock, we get this poppy fun superhero vibe that doesn't gel with the horror that we've just seen. Tom Hardy clearly has a lot of love for the Venom and Eddie Brock characters because his work on that aspect is the best part of the film, but it does not gel with what else is happening. This movie revolves around this company, The Life Foundation, headed by Carlton Drake, played by Riz Ahmed, who has been experimenting on humans, trying to bond them with these alien parasites called symbiotes. One of them escapes and bonds with Eddie Brock to form Venom. Venom then must stop Carlton Drake from unleashing more symbiotes on the world. The movie really does work best when Venom and Eddie Brock are together, where Tom Hardy absolutely nails their dynamic. The bizarre humour that the characters share in the comics is absolutely here, whether they're talking about eating brains or jumping into tanks full of lobsters. Tom Hardy has done everything he can to bring the Eddie Brock character from the comics to the big screen. The unfortunate thing is everything else around them feels pointless and just exists to push forward the Venom plot. The Life Foundation stuff is completely underwritten, where great actors like Riz Ahmed and Jenny Slate aren't given a whole lot to do. Our main villain Drake just wants to eradicate poor humans. For science, I guess. The supporting cast are completely one note and exist to either kill or aid Eddie before being ignored. It's like the characters were playing a video game and just had to act as a class that they'd chosen. If someone was a scientist then that's all they were. If someone was a doctor then they just had to be a doctor. At times Eddie Brock may as well have just been talking to cardboard cutouts of people. Even Eddie's partner Anne in the movie just exists to be the girlfriend and not much more. Which sucks because when you hear Academy Award nominated actress Michelle Williams has signed on to Venom, you think holy crap we might have something here. But it becomes more apparent as you watch the film that she's just phoned it in. The chemistry between her and Tom Hardy just isn't there. Any attempts for chemistry between the two characters just comes across as forced. Despite all this though, the movie is at its best when it wants to be this strange buddy cop monster movie. In fact, the music in this film by Black Panther composer Ludwig Göransson is at its best when it remembers it's a monster movie. There are some really fun tracks in this film. The action scenes in the movie are actually quite exciting, particularly a car chase through San Francisco, where the music really amplifies the action. But of course, Venom is the attraction here, and he looks great. The CG work on him is well done. For the most part, he's spot on. He just doesn't have the big white spider symbol that we're used to. It is a pity though that we have to wait a fair while for Venom to actually show up in this film. Ironically, anything prior to Venom showing up in this movie is just meh. The CG does take a dip when it's just the alien symbiote goo moving around. That's where I think the look of the symbiote in Spider-Man 3 might be the best way to portray it, as here it looks more digital and fake. Whereas in Spider-Man 3, there was a specific texture to it that made it look more authentic. The third act does devolve into a CGI clusterfest though, where it can be a bit hard to tell what's going on. Venom battles the villainous symbiote Riot. Having black and greyish white going up against each other during a night scene just turns into mush and I found it hard in certain shots who was actually who. At least if we get a sequel with Carnage that shouldn't be a problem. Venom is a strange experiment that for the time being stands on its own without any connection to Spider-Man although Sony wants this to be the start of their own Marvel Universe separate from the Avengers. I don't know if we'll get that, we'll have to wait and see, but there is some definite dumb goofy enjoyment to be had here, mainly with the character dynamic of Eddie Brock and Venom. If Sony makes their dynamic the focus in a Venom 2 then they could be onto something or otherwise try to better balance the horror and superhero comedy aspects. I think grab some beers and watch this with a bunch of friends where you don't have to think too much. This movie sets out to establish the character of Venom and not much else. I would have enjoyed some deeper supporting characters, particularly a villain that poses more of a threat to Venom, rather than just be a disposable character. Because Sony knows that we all want to see Venom fight Carnage. So this film feels like a stepping stone to the Venom movie that Sony wants to make and the Venom movie that fans want to see. I would also be completely okay with them trying again and introducing a more 
comic accurate Venom into the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Tom Holland and Spider-Man. I definitely have to commend them though for being able to make a Venom film that stands apart from Spider-Man. But there is always going to be a part of me that wants that connection to exist. If you're not interested in the film but you are curious then I would say wait for the Blu-ray to come out. Because then we should have the longer more violent version included. With the 40 minutes of footage that Tom Hardy was set to see go. Oh and Sony please stop putting the final shots of your movies in your trailers. Venom gets a 5.5 out of 10 for me. Guys I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your monofix. Bye guys.